Hi, I'm Nicholas Bergner with School of Permaculture, and I got a very interesting uh, concept to talk with you uh, about today. A few months back, I was traveling the Midwest of the United States, and I got uh, to spend a lot of time, at least a, good, a decent amount of time, and sit down with some GMO farmers and talk about some of the practices that were going on there, and um, kind of realizing that you know most farmers that are doing GMO want to be doing something else. Uh, they realize the destruction that's, hap that's happening. So, it, so at, at the first onslaught of this video, the farmers are not, um, they're not you know, pro-GMO, they're kind of locked into a system. So during that time, we had a lot of time in the car and we were traveling um, down, we went to quite a few places, check out our YouTube channel. Oh, and actually, if you are a permaculture site or a permaculturist, we have three more tours over the next few years uh, kind of planned out and we would love to come to you and put you on a tip of the day. So hey, learn at schoolofpermaculture.com. We'd love to work with you. So as, as I'm kind of in the car, I kind of like, I get this download and it's like, well, how can a farmer or a rancher, you know, especially here in Texas, we got, you know, huge acres of land going to GMO and to cattle. How can they change? How can they get out of that system and go into you know permaculture, something much more sustainable. Uh, there hasn't you know been a lot of options that has been presented that that you can do. And so here is one. So most sites that are doing you know let's just say a thousand acres of land, which is kind of small in GMO farming, believe it or not, they're making somewhere around. $200 per acre per harvest, you know, I'm giving you some round numbers here, doing GMO farming. And by doing that, there's not a lot of incentive to kind of change. It's not mega money, but at that point in time, they're pretty much office farming. They've hired people or they got a GPS uh, on a tractor that is doing the work for them and they're sitting back making about $200,000 a year, right? So there's not a lot of incentive at a thousand acres making around $200,000 a, a year, or actually uh, per harvest, I should say. However, they realize this is destroying the landscape and it will eventually come to an end because it's all based on chemicals which are based on a finite uh, product that comes from petroleum. So we have to get a little creative and think about how can the farmer or rancher steward his or her land better and still um, feel good about what they're doing and not make any less income. I mean, if you're making that, you know, there's not a lot of deterrent uh, other than just being exceptionally passionate about it. So what we can do, and this is a, um, you know, just at the birthing of this, so by all means, let's add on to this. So we're going to subdivide this land. And in this scenario, I'm subdividing it in lots of 100 acres. Now, that's still pretty big. So anywhere from say 10 acres to 100 acres is totally uh, doable. So the landowner Say he has a house over here on the land somewhere. That's fine, he keeps that. But the landowner then goes from farming the way he's been doing and gets into invisible structures. So now the farmer comes over here and says, okay, this is what I have been doing, GMO farming, and this is where we can go. So he's gonna set up a few things. First and foremost, he's gonna be a land lord. So now, instead of trying to farm on this, he's going to lease out, in this particular version we have 10, 10 different um, subdivisions. He's going to lease that out. Just that money itself won't get him the 200000 But whatever the market will bear in that economy or in that local, localized region, he can do. He or she can do. The next is we're going to create an invisible structure of what I'm calling currently, and I'll probably need to change the name, 
we're doing one here in North Texas called the LGBE Network. So this is the local grower and buyer exchange. So let's talk about that for a second. GMO farming is about farming that none of this with being grown is going to be first and foremost probably for human use and at a local level. This goes either all over the country or all over the world to go into products such as paints and, and cosmetic products and whatnot. So now we've transitioned already the thought processes from um, you know, all of this being mined, any nutrients that are left in the soil being mined and sent elsewhere to now we're going right local. So he sets up a network in a hub, right? So here's his LGBE network. And then he sets up out buyers. We can go direct you know, for, to market with this, like farmers markets. We can go directly to consumer with co-ops and CSAs. This is a very lucrative way to do this. And then we can go wholesale to restaurants. So this is just on his bit of land. Right? So now over here on this end is going to be each one of these that he's leasing out. So we lease those out to a farmer or a family and they come over here and become the suppliers of all this. Right, Because if you want to manage this well, you're going to need more than one person or more than one family for this much amount of land. So you work with local people and then you, you, you basically create this network that produces growers and whatever your, your region will allow to be grown. We're not trying to get silly here and grow bananas in Nebraska. Whatever that you can grow there, you take it locally. And you, you know, as the landowner, you design, you're now a designer, you design this whole system. Not only the invisible structures, but if you're going to come through here and have a, 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 an animal grazing or a paddock shifting system, if you're going to do water harvesting uh, swales or, or, or embankments as ponds, you're going to do any type of uh, contour subsoiling. That's all your design here. And then you basically put the rules and the guidelines on your property that says, hey, look, um, no artificial fertilizers, no herbicides, chemicals, pesticides, and anything that you know, is out of the scope of what you're wanting to do. Obviously, you know, fungicide and whatnot could be in the tool bag, but very rarely used. Then you design this up. They do this as a side note, because you, you know, we gotta have multiple functions. Say we're here near a road. So we open up, you know, first and foremost, a primary restaurant that is ran by locals that sells only this stuff. Right? So you now you have dairy. And let's just talk about which one of these can do. So we haven't really this is the network. This is the infrastructure and the mainframe and the construct of kind of what's going on locally, how to change this. Now, what do each one of these provide? Well, first and foremost, it was only providing one product. Now, we're going to come over here and we're going to say, okay, look, we're not just going to put in monoculture. We're going to go, okay, what grows in my area as far as, you know, tree systems? Right, so we have trees in the form of fruits and nuts, if we can do that. Right, we're going to have some type of berry. We're going to have some type of grazing system. Maybe it's cattle. It could be something else. So now we have cattle. We have beef. And we have dairy. I'm going to recommend we follow the cattle with some type of chicken system. All right, so now we have meat and eggs, right? And we're also still going to come in here and do some type of annual vegetables. 
that can be also moved around in the 10 to 100 acres here and can grow all year long if we do it correctly in polytunnels and whatnot. And obviously the perennial vegetables. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine at minimum agricultural products that each one of these is creating. These farmers lease the land, they now steward it under the guidelines of the landowner's rules. They sell to this network. This network is then in charge of this locally or at least regionally. And then you have taken care of multiple people having income. The landowner has income. The land itself is in much better condition and you've created local economy. This is a way that we can do it. it it's out there, use it. Guys, that's awesome. That is our tip of the day, our, our video. So come check out our website, schoolofpermaculture.com. Go to our Facebook page, like us, friend me, uh, Twitter. Uh, I don't even know if we have an Instagram yet. Uh, we're getting there. So come take a course, hire a consultant, also, we got our aid in our orphanage program where the proceeds from, the, from those two um, items go directly into helping uh, the needy. We got one coming up in Haiti um, pretty soon, so come out and join us, take a course there, or just come and, and donate with your time um, or anything that you have. So, you guys rock. I love you, and I'll see you next time.